This is going to be dangerous. All right, this is gym time. Okay. okay. Oh my God, that was heavy. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. I haven't done a book haul in a while, so I thought I would do my first book haul of 2021. This is kind of a culmination of a bunch of books that I've gotten within the past few months. Some I got for Christmas that I just haven't shown you, some I've bought myself, some I have been sent from friends, so I thought that I would do a nice big book haul today. I have 20 books to show you guys, so I'm not going to ramble on it for too long on each one, especially because since this is a book haul, I haven't read most of them. I have read a few of them, but the ones that I haven't read, I don't know too much about, so I'm just going to briefly talk about them, talk about what I know about them, and that will be that. So without further ado, I think I'm going to start with the books that I got for Christmas, because those are the ones that I got first, before the rest. So... Here we go. The first book I got for Christmas from my beautiful cousin Nina. She is also a reader and so we always get each other books for Christmas. The book that she got me is Mar The Marvels by Brian Selznick. Brian Selznick is the author of The Invention of Hugo Cabret. This is a middle grade book. He is an incredible writer and illustrator and all of his books, first of all, can we talk about how gorgeous this is? Oh my goodness. All of his books are fully illustrated, so they are told in words and pictures. This one, you could just see pictures. There are words in there too. There they are. So beautiful. And I don't know too much about this book. Yes, yeah, so here you go. You could see. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if you can hear that. It's like the fresh book sound. Oh my gosh. Um, but they are kind of a cinematic reading experience. The way that he illustrates is incredible. And I don't know too much about this book, and I kind of don't want to know too much because I feel like it's really exciting to go into Brian Selznick's books not knowing too much and just being really pleasantly surprised. I haven't even looked at many of the illustrations because, again, I want to be surprised and kind of have that special first reading experience with his books. But. I highly recommend you check out his work. He's inc an incredible writer, an incredible illustrator, and I'm so excited and so happy that I got this book from my cousin. It's just absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to read it, so wonderful. The next book I got from my other cousin Michelle, who is also a reader, so we also exchange books for with one another. The book that she got me is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. I already read this book and loved it. I gave it five stars. This is the illustrated edition. It is illustrated by Chris Riddell and oh my gosh this book is so incredibly good. Um, I recently talked about it in a reading vlog but I don't think I uploaded that yet. Oh my gosh how do I even begin talking about this book because there's so much going on in this book. It's about this man who has this very rare aging condition where he ages incredibly slow. So he it, he looks as if he's 40 or 41 around there, but he has actually been alive for centuries and centuries and it's just because he ages very slowly and it's about his experience from the late 1500s all the way to current day, all the famous historical events he's been witness to, all the famous people from history he has lived through, experienced, talked to, met with. It's just an incredible book and another underlying part of this story is that he is a part of this society where there are certain rules that they have to abide by and um, one of the rules is that he can't fall in love because it comes with a lot of consequences and it's all about trying not to be found out that you have this condition because obviously you know, it, it would be very prob problematic if people f of every day found out that these people aged very slowly because everybody wants eternal life um, or at least a longer chance at life and it's just, it's so incredible. This book is full of so much. Matt Haig is a master of human emotions and he is just a master of the human heart and reading this book was an incredible reading experience especially with the gorgeous illustrations from Chris Riddell and I just loved, loved this book so much and I can't wait to reread it eventually and 
oh my gosh, I can't recommend this book enough. It is so, so good. And I think the next book that I'm going to read from Matt Haig is going to be The Midnight Library because I've heard amazing things about that one as well. So five stars for this book. Incredible. Highly, highly recommend, especially the gorgeous illustrated edition. The next books I got from my amazing parents, the first book that they got me is The Joy of Walking, Selected Writings, and edited by Susie Cripps. This is from the Macmillan Collector's Library editions, which are what these are, but the, it's in a little different formatting, and this is a collection from classic writers about the joys of walking, and if you don't know, um, you might not know this, but I love going on really long walks. I love nature, I love wildlife, and I just love walking. And when I heard about this book before Christmas, I it just sounded like it was the perfect book for me. So I put it on my wish list and my mom got it for me. Um, I will read you the back because it's just amazing. There's a little quote at the top. And with leisure and my thoughts, I walk the fields, unfettered by bounds of space or time. The Joy of Walking brings together essays, fiction, and poetry which celebrate the simple act of putting one foot in front of the other. Walking has long been a source of inspiration and creativity to writers. Many such as William Wordsworth and Walt Whitman extol the virtues of walking in the countryside, either alone or in the company of friends, whilst others such as Charles Dickens and E.M. Forrester, two of my favorite authors, explore the thrill and dangers of moving about the city. For women writers such as Emily Bronte and Elizabeth Gaskell, they show walking to be a root of freedom and privacy, and many describe how walking can be healing, surely a valuable lesson in today's frantic world. Edited and introduced by Susie Cripps. And this just sounds like the perfect book for me, being such a lover of walking and a lover of classics and a lover of classic authors. This just sounds perfect. So I can't, can't, can't wait to read this. And I'm just, it sounds like the perfect book for me. And also I love those cute little end papers. I love small books, especially the Mac, uh, Pan Macmillans. I love them so much and they're just perfect. So yay, can't wait to read this. I have a feeling I'm going to absolutely love it. The next book that my parents kindly got me is A Timeless Christmas. This is a collection of classic stories and poems. Some of the authors that are in this book are Louisa May Alcott, L. Frank Baum, O. Henry, and more. So this is the third book in the collection of the classic vintage and timeless Christmas collections. I have the other two in the collection, but this is the third one, and I didn't have this one yet, so my mom and I love the designs of them. I'll go get the other two because they're right there. So the first one that I got is... A classic Christmas and when I bought this and I showed it to my mom she isn't a big reader but she loved the cover she loves gardening and foliage and uh, greenery and so I showed her this cover and she absolutely loved it and then she was thinking like oh my gosh this is such a beautiful book to display because she loves interior decorating and designing and then for my birthday in October she got me a vintage Christmas which is the second book in the collection and then for Christmas, she got me a timeless Christmas. So this is the third in the series. And I read, I've only read the first one, A Classic Christmas. I read it this past holiday season, actually. So I think I'm going to save each one for maybe a different holiday season throughout the years. But they're wonderful collections. They give you little snippets from different writers, poets, poetry, short stories. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to take in little bits of classics, little different uh, bits of classic authors, and they're all around, set around the holidays, so I absolutely love these, and I'm so glad that my mom and my dad helped me grow my collection with the third one. The next book that my parents very kindly got me is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This is from the Gorgeous Penguin Threads editions. They, it's part of the Penguin Deluxe editions. And the cover art is by Rachel Stumpter. Yes, by Rachel Stumpter. And what's amazing about these is that inside the end, not the end papers, but the the opposite side of the cover is the opposite side of the embroidery. It's just genius, and it's just the most beautiful design ever. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. And then the other additions that they have, um, they have The Wind in the Willows, The Wizard of Oz, Little Women, 
Black Beauty, The Secret Garden, and Emma. I really, really, really want the Emma edition, but I can't find it anywhere. I don't know if they're printing it anymore, but that is an edition of Emma that I dream about every day. And this is actually... This cover design style inspired a project that I'm doing for my thesis. I am in my last year at university. I'm an illustration student, if you don't know, and I am working to become a cover designer and a book illustrator. And I am so inspired by what they have done. Just overall, the Penguin Deluxe Editions are a huge source of an inspiration for me, especially the Penguin threads. So. For one of my thesis projects, I have to do three book jackets, and or I've, I've chosen to do three book jackets. You can really pick whatever you want to do for your thesis, and because I want to be a book designer, I chose three book jackets. So one of my designs is actually for Anne of Green Gables, and I am going to do it fully embroidered. And I'm so excited. I have done my sketches. I actually pitched it to my professor already. He really likes it. So I am so excited to get working on that. But yes, this was my idea was heavily inspired by the penguin threads. And I just love this edition so much. Um, I don't know too much about the story itself. I know that it is a children's classic about these four main animal characters. I believe the four main characters are Toad, Mole, Badger, and Rat, um, and it's about their adventures, and I think they all have very interesting personalities, and it's really about their their adventures and their misadventures. I have heard wonderful things about this book. I love when uh, animals come to life and sort of have these um, human attributes. I think that that's such a wonderful story, especially like Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh growing up was my favorite story. I still love Winnie the Pooh so much and I feel like this is kind of along the same lines and I just can't wait to read it. can't believe I haven't read it all yet already, but I'm so excited, so yes. Then the last book my parents got me for Christmas is Mary Oliver's Devotions. This is a collection of Mary Oliver's poetry that I am currently in the middle of reading and I'm reading it slowly because I just never want her poetry to end. And this is a bigger collection of her smaller collections. So this isn't her completed works, but it is almost her completed works. They took a bunch of her poems from her separate smaller collections and put them in this one edition. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I love that cover design. And one of the three books besides Anne of Green Gables that I'm designing for my thesis is also a cover design for Mary Oliver's poetry. And I'm so excited to work on that. I'm still mulling over my ideas and everything for that one. It's not sketched out yet, but I have a few ideas and I'm really excited to work on that. And the more poems I read from her, the more inspired I am. She is my favorite poetess and I adore her. I hope that me talk I feel like I talk about her all the time and I hope that me talking about her kind of makes you guys excited to pick up her work because she deserves all the readers in the world. Her poetry is a lot about the beauty in the natural world and the simple magic of everyday life is just captured in her poems and it's about the connection to that humans have to nature, to animals, to wildlife and it's just her poetry hits you right in the heart and soul and I always say that if my soul could write poetry, it would write and sound like a Mary Oliver poem. And that's just uh, the best way I can describe my connection to this book. It just feels like I'm reading my inner thoughts and my inner emotions when I'm reading Mary Oliver. And I love her so much. So highly, highly, highly recommend you pick up Mary Oliver. She's amazing. And I love her so much. So please read Mary Oliver. Oh, so good. Then the next books I'm going to talk about, I picked up randomly. There isn't really a specific reason why uh, these are in a category, but they are. These are just random books that I've picked up here and there. The first one is Never Let Me Go by Kazuro Ishiguro, and I am so excited to read this book. I have heard nothing but incredible things about it. It won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and... I don't know too much about this book along the lines of coming of age. I know a few people describe it as slightly dark academia, but not really. I have very high expectations for this book. I've never read any Ishiguro before, but I think that I'm going to really enjoy his writing and I'm just very, very excited about this book and I hope to pick it up very soon. I know it's extremely emotional and emotional books are some of my favorite books, so 
I hope to pick this one up very, very soon. The next book that I got is a classic, and that is De Profundis and Other Writings by Oscar Wilde. I love Oscar Wilde, he's one of my favorite writers, and I have heard heartbreaking things about De Profundis. This is a letter, I believe, that he wrote while he was in jail about his life and his experiences and his emotions, and um, I think it's it's a letter written to the love of his life and talking about their life together. I'm really not too sure, honestly. I could be wrong, but I, that's what I am thinking going into this book. I don't want to know too much because I feel like I want to be pleasantly and emotionally and heartbrokenly surprised by Oscar Wilde and I have a feeling that this book is just going to break my heart and put it together and make me love Oscar Wilde even more than I already do and I can't wait to can't wait to read this. I actually got it from Depop which is how I got the Penguin Vintage Edition. These aren't printed anymore but you can find them secondhand and I really really like these copies. Um, and also it's it's better for the planet to recycle used books so I'm very excited for this one. The next four books are kind of along the same lines of being involving in nature, wildlife, and the environment. The first one that I have is My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. If you don't know about the TV show The Durrells in Corfu, then oh my goodness, I have to tell you about it. It is an incredible show. I watched it on Amazon Prime Video, that's how I got it. It's based off of these books written by Gerald Durrell, and they are nonfiction about Gerald, or Jerry, is the youngest of a family of four kids, one girl, three boys, and their widowed mother. They, the show follows them first in England, and how they are kind of all sort of wayward. They just have a very uneventful life, and they feel kind of stuck, and they don't really know what they're doing. The mother decides to pick them up and move them to Greece, to this very small island called Corfu, and Jerry wrote about their experience on the island, and he is a naturalist, he loves animals, and he opens up a zoo on their land, and it's about his passion and love for animals and wildlife, and it just sounds like everything I will love. I absolutely love the show, and of course when I found out that they were based off of books, I had to get my hands on it. So this is the first book in a series of a bunch of Jerry's books, and I'm not too sure what this one's about. I think this one is just about them going to Corfu in the beginning when they first get there and about the family and also Jerry's attachment to animals and how that really affects his life and his family's life. So can't wait to read this. Love the show and I have a feeling I'm going to love the book. The next book that I got I am so excited for and that is Vesper Flights by Helen McDonald. She is the author of H is for Hawk and this is actually a signed copy which I got at my local independent bookstore. This is a signed first edition and when I saw that I had to snag it. I actually haven't read H is for Hawk but I've heard incredible things. I don't know if I should read H is for Hawk first or if it's okay to just read Vesper Flights. Um, so maybe if you've read H is for Hawk you can let me know. Do you think I should read that one before I read this one? I don't have H's for Hawk, but I will willingly get it. She is a very well-known writer. I think it's just a nonfiction about her life, her experiences, and also how it relates to the environment and nature. And it sounds like everything that I will love, so I can't wait to read this book. I feel like sh maybe should I read the inside just to see. Okay, it says, A literary cabinet of curiosities about the wonders and oddities of the natural world. Vesper Flights collects, for the first time, award-winning Helen MacDonald's best-loved pieces, together with new essays on topics ranging from nostalgia for the countryside of her youth to a true account of a refugee's flight to the UK, meditations on notions of captivity and freedom, immigration and flight, Helen invites us into her most intimate experiences, observing the massive migration of songbirds from the top of the Empire State Building, watching tens of thousands of cranes in Hungary, seeking the last golden Orioles in Suffolk's popular forests. She writes with heart-tugging clarity about wild boars, swifts, mushroom hunting, migraines, the strangeness of bird n bird's nests, and the unexpected guidance and comfort we find when watching wildlife. So that just sounds like my 
cup of tea. Um, oh my goodness, I love that so much. I, it sounds amazing, and I have a feeling I'm going to love this book, so very excited. If I do end up reading this before H is for Hawk, then I'm definitely going to read H is for Hawk as well, because it is like a bestseller. Everybody talks about how much they love it, especially in the environmental, natural literature circles, so can't wait to read this. The next two I got kind of go hand in hand, even though from they're from different writers. I'm so excited for them. The first one is The Overstory by Richard Powers. This is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. This is a book about the natural world above ground, um, which just kind of sounds very open-ended because everything above ground is part of the natural world, but um, the way that it relates to the next book, the next book is Underland by Robert McFarlane, and this is all about everything under the ground. And so these two go hand in hand because this one is about above ground, this one is about underground. <laughs> um, the first one that I will talk about is The Overstory, and it's all about the environment and the effect that humans have on nature and wildlife, and I will read the back because I don't want to ramble on, I want this to come across clearly. Also, when I saw this, because I've heard nothing but incredible, incredible, amazing things about this book, and when I saw it in the bookstore, I was contemplating whether I should get it or not, and I first read the back, and then I read the first page, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get this book, it sounds incredible, because the writing is so poetic and lyrical and gorgeous, and it just sounds amazing. So the back says, National Book Award winner Richard Powers' 12th novel is a sweeping, impassioned work of activism and resistance that is also a stunning evocation of and pay into the natural world. From the roots to the crown and back to the seeds, the overstory folds in concentric rings of interlocking fables that range from antebellum New York to the late 20th century timber wars of the Pacific Northwest and beyond. There was a world alongside ours, vast, slow, interconnected, resourceful, magnificently inventive, and almost invisible to us. This is a story of a handful of people who learn how to see that the world and who are drawn up into its unfolding catastrophe. So this just sounds incredible. It sounds like this big, massive, huge, plot line of, of interlocking stories and uh, it travels through time and the first part I believe is titled Roots so it's all about just the creation and these different fables and it sounds amazing. I'll just read you the first little bit of the book because just to give you a taste of the writing it is incredible and when I read this in the bookstore I was just taken aback and I immediately grabbed it and bought it. First there was nothing, then there was everything. Then in a park above a western city after dusk, the air is raining messages. A woman sits on the ground, leaning against a pine. Its bark presses hard against her back, as hard as life. Its needles scent the air and a force hums in the heart of the wood. Her ears tune down to the lowest frequencies. The tree is saying things in words, before words. It says, Sun and water are questions endlessly worth answering. It says, A good answer must be reinvented many times from scratch. It says, Every piece of earth needs a new way to grip it. There is more ways to branch than any cedar pencil will ever find. A thing can travel everywhere just by holding still. So those are the first two paragraphs. I don't want to give you guys too much else because I don't want to... I just want to like go in, read it all in one go. I'm so excited for this book. It sounds amazing and I'm just... I have very, very high hopes for that one. Then talking about Underland by Robert McFarlane. He is one of my favorite writers and poets and naturalists and just people in general. He's amazing. Um, I actually haven't read any of his longer works before. I have just read The Lost Spells, which is a collection of his poems slash spells about different animals and trees and flowers and nature. 
This book is a deep time journey and it's all about his experiences traveling and learning about the underlands and what lies beneath the earth and it also expands time and space and our human knowledge and our effect with the environment with the natural world and it just sounds amazing so I will also read you the back. In Underland, Robert McFarlane delivers an epic exploration of the world's underworlds as they exist in myth, literature, memory, and the land itself. Traveling through the dizzying expanse of geologic time, from prehistoric art in Norwegian sea caves, to the blue depths of the Greenland ice caps, to a deep sunk hiding place where nuclear waste will be stored for 100,000 years to come. Underland takes us on an extraordinary journey into our relationship with darkness, burial, and what lies beneath the surface of both place and mind. <sighs> oh, it sounds amazing. And Robert McFarlane, I have watched a few of his interviews talking about this book, and he has read a few excerpts from it, and it just sounds, his writing, incredible. And I can't wait to read this. I think I might, I don't know if I'm going to read um, the overstory first and then Underland, or if I'm going to read Underland first and then the overstory, I'm not sure, but I'm so excited for these two. They sound amazing. All right, the next collection of books I have here are books that I've either bought myself or have been given very kindly from friends. Okay, the first one I think I'm going to start with is a book I got very recently, and this is a collection of short stories by Anton Chekhov, and this is from the Modern Library publication, and I recently was thinking about, because I want to expand my translated literature horizons, especially with Russian literature, because I love Tolstoy so much, I definitely want to read more from other very famous Russian writers, one of them being Anton Chekhov, and I have heard nothing but incredible, amazing things. I keep saying incredible and amazing, but I have heard wonderful things about Anton Chekhov. And I recently asked on my Instagram story if you recommend starting at a certain place with Chekhov. A lot of people said to start with his short stories. So the next day I went to my favorite independent bookshop and they had this beautiful collection of his short stories and I thought that this was perfect. So this has a bunch of his, I don't think this is his complete collected works of short stories, but you can see the contents have a bunch of his works and I'm so excited to read more Chekhov. I've only read Gooseberries by him, which is part of the Penguin Little Black Classics, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to have a, a bigger collection of his short works and read more from him. I think I'm going to read maybe like two a month or just read this a bit slowly throughout the year because that's what I like doing with collections. Um, and so I'm really excited to read more Chekhov, and I have a feeling that I'm going to really like his writing. I also want to read more of his plays as well, so if you have any recommendations for specific plays that you personally love from Chekhov, then definitely let me know, tell me about them in the comments, um, and I'll prioritize those as well. The next book I got on that same trip to my favorite independent bookstore, I got The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes, and I have heard again a lot of wonderful things about this book. It is a relatively short book. I feel like it kind of is a modern classic from... I just hear so much about it, and I honestly don't know too much. I know that it's about a middle-aged man. Some people describe it as slightly dark academ academic. Um, it's about how he's dealing with the relationship of him and his family. They have a very strained relationship, and it's very emotional. That's all that I really know about this book. Because it's pretty small and it's so well known that I don't really want to know too much going in. I kind of want to be surprised, but I've heard, again, wonderful things. So I'm very excited to read this. I also feel like this is one of those books that I think about it and I just remember so many people describing it as very heartbreaking and that's always a selling point for me. I love a heartbreaking book. If a book can make me feel and feel deeply. That's all I want from literature. So very excited to read this one. 
The next book I also bought myself, and that is The Dark Interval by Raina Maria Rilke. This is Letters for the Grieving Heart. This is a collection of letters that Rilke wrote about loss and about mourning and about grief. And um, this, I bought it for a specific reason, because I am um, grieving, and uh, that's one of the things that was going on in January that I was talking about in my videos about um, January just being a really hard month for me and my family. Um, that was why um, part of it. Um, and so I remember hearing Emma, Emma from Emmy and Lucy from Crescent Pages, they both are my dearest friends, and they were talking about reading these letters and how much it helped them with their own grief. And I thought that it would be a really perfect time for me to kind of grieve with Rilke and for him to help me in this very difficult and emotional time that, you know, it's just part of life, but I feel like he's going to really help me. And so that's why I bought this book and I'm very, very excited to read it. I know that it's going to make me feel, just as I was saying, I love when books make me feel, this is definitely going to make me feel. Um, and I, I really enjoyed Letters to a Young Poet by Rilke, so I'm excited to read more from him, and I have very, very high expectations for this book because I know it's just going to be amazing. The next book that I bought, I'm so excited about. I already listened to this book on audiobook, and I gave it five stars, and it is already a new all-time favorite just from reading the audiobook, and so I obviously had to buy myself a physical copy, and that is Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. This is translated from Polish. Again, I want to read more translated fiction, so if you have any recommendations for translated fiction, I definitely leave them down below. Um, this book, where do I even begin by describing it, by talking about it? It is incredible. It is one of the most heartbreaking and heart-making books I've ever read. Um, this is following a coming-of-age story between two boys in the downfall of communist Poland, and it is about them meeting, them having this very passionate relationship with one another, and then about how politics really takes that relationship and changes it very drastically because they both have very different relationships with what's going on politically. And it's such an incredible story because it's not only a gorgeous love story, but it is also an incredible historical fiction novel. And the way that it weaves the two boys' relationships with what's going on in Poland is just breathtaking. The writing is also lyrical and, and poetic and just, you, I was listening to this book and I was just like sitting there with tears in my eyes because it was just so emotional and emotive and oh my gosh, there were so many moments where I was listening to it and I wanted to highlight and annotate and just like have the words in front of me, but because it was an audiobook, I obviously couldn't, so I was just so excited to get my hands on a physical copy and I can't wait to reread this this year. I'm definitely rereading it very soon. I think I'm going to reread it with my friend Kiara from her Instagram Sweet Imaginings and because I was telling her about it, I think she's going to love it too. I can't wait to annotate every single page of this book. I'm so excited. And the next book that I bought, I bought because it was mentioned in this book, and I have been wanting to read this next book for years, and I just haven't for some reason, and I think finally this is my chance now. Um, reading Swimming in the Dark, this book had a very big effect on the two main characters of Swimming in the Dark, and that really prompted me to pick it up soon. So that next book is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This book is from the Penguin Great Loves editions. I have seen quite a few of these. I don't think too many are available anymore from what I've seen online. Um, I, I never see these in bookshops. Uh, I've only, I got this on Book Depository, um, but they have a bunch of other books in this collection as well. Um, yeah, so I think they're just editions of like great love stories. This one is one of the most famous uh, male-male romances and James Baldwin is such a well-known writer and I'm so excited to read more from him. Giovanni's Room I don't know too much about, I just know that it's about these two main characters Giovanni and David and their relationship. I've heard it's heartbreaking. I love 
love stories that end in tragedy because I feel like they just make me feel so much more and they stick in my brain a lot more and they just stay in my heart longer. Um, which, I don't know what that says about me. I just love heartbreaking love stories, but I know that Giovanni's Room does fall under those guidelines, and I'm very excited for that. I'm very excited to experience that. So I think Kiara and I are going to both buddy read Swimming in the Dark and Giovanni's Room together. She has also really been wanting to read this book for a while, so very, very excited to read this. The next three books I got from some lovely friends. The first one I have already showed on my channel, but I thought I would show it again and just thank Emma again for getting this for me. Emma from Emmy is my co-host for the Dickens and Tolstoy debate and also the Dark Academics book club and the co-creator of the Dark Academia book tag. She is my partner in crime and she got me a Dickens book as as she should um, and she got me this gorgeous edition of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I saw her hold this book up in one of her videos and I immediately asked her, I was like, where did you get that? I have to get myself that copy. It's so beautiful. It is a replica of the first edition. It even has the same uh, colored illustrations. I will get to it. Let's see. Introduction, introduction. So here we go. It has the first, the same um, title page and then look at that. Oh my goodness so beautiful. The illustrations and also the first title page. It has gorgeous green end papers and it even has a reproduction of, yeah, the title page. So title page from Dickens' manuscript, which is just incredible. So this book is a treasure. It is so beautiful. It's embossed on the edges. It's gold leaf. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous treasure. And it's made even more special that Emma got it for me. So Emma, if you're watching this, thank you so much. I love this book. I will treasure it forever. And I will always think of you when I look at it and when I read from it and our love for Dickens and Tolstoy. Um, so yes, thank you so much for getting this book for me. I love it. It is now one of my favorite books ever because it's just so special. I love that it's a reproduction of the first edition. I hope and wish that more publishers do that because I love it. The next and last two books are from a wonderful girl, a wonderful viewer of mine, and a wonderful friend of mine, Lapika. She contacted me on my Instagram and asked if I would be willing to give her my Amazon wish list because she wanted to send me some books. And I was so touched that she wanted to do that and so grateful and honored and I felt so happy that she wanted to do that. I don't have my Amazon wish list readily available for you guys because I kind of feel a little funny doing that, but if that's something that you would want access to, um, I don't want you to feel like, oh yes, you know, buy me books. But if that's something that would make you happy and if you want me to read a specific book and you want to get it for me, then I mean, you're more than welcome to do that. I just feel funny. Um, but yeah, let me know if that's something that you want. Even if it's something that you want to see the books that I'm eyeing and just to see books that I'm interested in for your own sake, for your own purchasing. Um, so yes, these two books were from my Amazon wishlist. Thank you so much, Lapika, for getting these books for me. You really have no clue how much it means to me and how grateful and honored I am that you want to do that. It makes my heart so happy and it makes these books so much more special when it comes from friends, when it comes from people that, you know, do it out of the kindness of their heart. So the first book I'm so excited for, that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I have heard, again, incredibly amazing things about this book. Um, I don't know anything about this story and I don't want to know anything because so many people, all I see are just five-star reviews. Everybody's saying, oh my gosh, I love this book so much. Oh my gosh, I can't stop reading it. I have just heard people raving non-stop about this book. I literally haven't heard one bad thing. Not one. So I don't want to know anything. I want to just go into it and experience it for myself and be surprised and fall in love with it. And I have a feeling that I'm going to absolutely adore this book. So thank you so much, Lapika, for getting this for me. I can't wait to read it, hopefully very soon. It just, it even looks like a Carolyn book, you know? I feel like it just has my name written all over it. 
Obviously it doesn't. It has the House in the Cerulean Sea written all over it, but <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm gonna love it. Then the last book of this book haul, and the last and other book that Lapika kindly got me, is a book that I have been wanting to read since it came out, I believe a year ago, and it's by an author that I'm so excited to read from. I've heard, again, nothing but incredible things about this book, and that is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Now, the first time I heard Ocean Vuong's name was, I believe, two or three years ago. At university, I was taking one of my creative writing classes, and I had a pretty young professor. He was a writer um, in New York City, but he was also a professor on the side. And he mentioned his friend was writing a book. His friend's name was Ocean Vuong. And the book that he was mentioning that he was writing is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. And so when I saw this book get published, I thought, oh my gosh, that's the book that my professor was talking about. This is from his friend. And then I went on to see everybody reading it and everybody loving it, and so I was just so eager to read this book. Hearing that everybody loved it, knowing that it was my professor's friend who wrote it, um, I've been following Ocean Vuong on social media for a while, and he just seems like a wonderful person and a wonderful writer. This book, again, don't know too much about it. I do know that it follows our main narrator writing a letter to his mother who can't read, so he's writing this with the knowledge that she won't be able to read it. And I think it's his experience as an immigrant and their experience and their relationship with one another, mother and son, and I know that it's heartbreaking and heartwarming and just a gorgeously written story. Ocean Vuong, I believe, is also a poet, or at least his writing is very poetic and lyrical, and I love this cover too, on a completely different note. I really love this cover. Um, but yes, I have very high hopes for this book. I think I'm going to absolutely adore it, and I'm hoping to read it very soon, because I have just been aching to read this ever since it was published, I think a year ago, more than a year ago. So I can't, can't, can't wait, and I'm so grateful that Lapika got it for me. So thank you so much. I am very, 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 very happy that I now have this in my hands and can't wait to read it. So yes, those are all 20 of the newer books that I've gotten. I am so excited to read them, so happy that to grow my to grow my library. I feel like every time I buy a new book, it's like having a new adventure waiting for me. Um, so yes, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Sorry, I feel like it's a bit long, but all my videos are long. I hope you don't mind that. I feel like if a random person came to my channel and they looked at the length of all my videos, they'd be like, oh my god, this girl never shuts up. No, I don't shut up. But I hope you guys don't mind that. I know quite a lot of you like my bookish rambles. So here is another bookish ramble about all the new books that I've gotten recently. I'm so excited to read them. I hope you guys have found maybe some books that you love. If you love any of these or if you're excited about them, let me know in the comments. Recommend me books based on what you think I would enjoy. I love getting recommendations. Tell me some new books you've bought yourself um, or books that you've been given. I just love talking about new books and books we're excited about. And yes, I hope that I've also brought you a little bit of bookish joy to your day. So I will see you guys soon in another video. Happy reading!